Hi there, and welcome to this video on acid alkali titrations. The aim for this video is to show you all the different steps needed to carry out an acid alkali titration, as well as showing you how to produce a pure dry soluble precipitate such as sodium chloride. Okay then, so what we want to be doing here is a titration experiment to find out how much acid it takes to neutralize 10 mil of our sodium hydroxide. So, first thing you need to do is get yourself a pet filler and a pet and measure out 10 mil of your sodium hydroxide. That goes into the conical flask down here. The next thing you want to do is fill up your burette with your hydrochloric acid. So it's on the, the bottom of the meniscus line, it's on zero. Then you want to take some indicator, in this case, phenolphthalein, and you want to put a few drops so that your sodium hydroxide solution goes pink. You're then going to turn the tap on your burette and you're just going to let it go until it goes completely colourless. Keep stirring and you're looking for it to go completely colourless. Then you're going to stop the tap. That's gone at around 16.2 centimetres, 16.2 mil. Okay, so now that you've done that, the next step is to do the same experiment again. So put in your indicator solution, but this time you're going to go down to just below. So instead of going down to 16, I'm going to go down to about 14. So I'm going to go down to 30 on here. You do the same, you keep stirring, you keep stirring, you keep stirring, and then when you get down to 30, you're going to stop. And then you're going to add it in, drop by drop, until it goes completely colourless. Which happened there at 30.8. Now you've done that, you need to repeat it three times, which I've already done. And by doing that, you're getting three sets of concordant data, three bits of data that are really close up next to each other, and taking the average. That is the total amount of acid that is needed to neutralize our 10 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. So to actually get your soluble salt through from this, what you need to do is redo that titration one more time. But this time, you don't put the indicator in to make sure it's pure. So what we do is we fill back up to the zero line and then we put in 14.5 centimeters cubed. So you turn the tap. You watch it very carefully. Slow it down when it gets to 14 and then do it drop by drop until you get to 14.5. So in here, now, I have my pure sodium chloride solution, my pure soluble salt. Okay, so your next step then is what we need to do is evaporate it. So you're going to take your solution and you're going to tip it into an evaporating basin. You're then going to pop on a clay triangle into your tripod and light your function button. Place your evaporating basin on top and then begin to heat strongly. Now you're going to continue this until it starts to evaporate and then you're going to keep removing and putting the Bunsen burner back in to make sure you don't get any of the salt splitting. Bearing in mind we want to get as much of this salt as possible. Okay, what we're doing here is we are evaporating the water to leave us with our salt which we've just produced. By not using an indicator, we're making sure it's pure. By making sure that we've done the titration correctly, we're making sure that we've got no unreacted acid or alkali in there. So the more repeats you do, the more accurate that is. Now, for safety reasons, when you're heating this, it will start to spit. So if it starts to heat up too much, you remove the Bunsen burner, let it settle down again, and then continue. You want to go until you've got about a third of your solution left and then 
once it's at that you leave it on one side to cool the remaining water will evaporate off and that will leave you with your pure salt let's get straight into some questions then so the first one says name a suitable indicator to use in a titration for this one think back to the indicator we used today try and remember the spelling for it it's important to be able to remember that for the exam and then there are there's one other that you could use which we didn't cover in today's video question two think back to the method step by step and how i did it during this video use that the one that we where we produced sodium chloride from sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid and change it very very slightly to describe how to produce a pure dry salt of lithium nitrate from lithium hydroxide and nitric acid so it's a six marker there are loads of ways you can get the marks for this one question three says explain why you should use a fresh sample without an indicator when preparing your salt so think back to when i said why we had to do a new one without that indicator that'll give you your answer there and then finally question four which is a two marker says explain one way to reduce the risks during this investigation now although i didn't cover that in the video think back to the hazards associated with acids and alkalis and evaporating and what can be done to reduce that pause the video now we'll have a look and see how you've done in a min okay let's have a look and see how you've done them so the first one which is name a suitable indicator to use in a titration the one we are looking for is phenolphthalein i would have also accepted methyl orange although i would prefer you to remember phenolphthalein because that's the one that has the more clear endpoint you would not get a mark for litmus solution or universal indicator solution neither of those will be accepted for a titration question two describe how to produce that pure dry salt of lithium nitrate so your very first step then is to measure out some of your lithium hydroxide with a pipette so you needed to include a volume could have been anything which is why i've put x there and you need to say with a pipette usually 10 or 25 centimeters cubed are the ones that we go with Second mark is to fill up the burette, and in particular saying to the bottom of the meniscus line, so it's on zero. So there are two marks for that bit. Then add your indicator, so you can name it with either phenolphthalein or methyl orange. And then slowly add the acid to the alkali until the phenolphthalein turns from purple or pink to colourless, or the methyl orange turns from yellow to orange depending on what you chose for the indicator in the first place. So you get one mark for saying the indicator and one mark for saying the colour change you will see when it is neutral. The next mark is for saying repeat until you have concordant data or if you can't remember the word concordant, three sets of similar results. And then take an average and repeat without the indicator to produce your pure salt. So average, add it in again without the indicator and that will give you your pure salt that's one mark for that then evaporate the solution you could go into with a Bunsen burner and talk about through the method there but the key thing is evaporating the solution evaporating the water off and then leave it to dry either on one side or in a desiccator question three then explain why you should use a fresh sample without an indicator when preparing your salt key thing there is purity so you can either say the salt would not be pure or you could turn around and be a bit more detailed and say the salt would contain the indicator making it impure and then finally question four one way to reduce risks during the investigation there are two different things you could have really gone with here one of them being acids and alkalis can be irritants for one mark and then the explaining how to reduce it is to wear goggles or if it gets on your hands wash it off and the other one is the spitting part so the salt can spit out when evaporating which can cause burns and then the way to reduce that risk is to keep removing the bunts and burner to stop it spitting you might have got away with wearing gloves for that as well okay that ends this video let's have a look at the review section okay so the review section then is to plan an investigation to produce a pure dry salt of potassium chloride from potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid in your plan you should include all the equipment needed think back to the ones stuff that we use today a step-by-step -step method to produce the pure dry solid of potassium chloride and then finally what the hazards are and how you should minimize them 
Hi guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click the subscribe button down below and visit the website mrbarnstc.com for more.